வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் நர்வ் அல்ட்ரா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் அண்ட் ஃபங்க்ஷனல் அனாட்டமி வாட் ஆர் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கவரிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த நர்வ் வாட் இஸ் தி அல்ட்ரா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் த நர்வ் அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் இன் பிட்வீன் த ஃபைப்ரல்ஸ் ஆஃப் த நர்வ் to study the parts of the nerve we shall now consider this diagrammatic representation of the nerve the outermost covering of the nerve proper is called the epineurium this consists of two parts the extrinsic epineurium which is a thickened structure completely covering the nerve and the intrinsic epineurium which consists of the fibers or the tissue of the epineurium that surrounds the fascicles in the nerve so the epineurium is a condensation of the loose connective tissues that surround the perineural ensheathment of the fascicles it is the plane of dissection in which the nerve can be dissected this epineurium can be incised excised and sutured without causing harm to the fascicles and the source of strength of any suture is this epineurium hence the suture should be placed in the epineurium alone without harming the fascicles within the surrounding layers of the external and internal epineurium we have the fascicles which are surrounded by a layer known as the perineurium this perineurium too extends into the fascicles surrounding the neurons within the fascicle are multiple nerve fibers we shall now take a close up view of these nerve fibers to find out their coverings and the structure these nerve fibers actually consist of the basic unit of the nerve which is the neuron and its multiple coverings the outermost layer surrounding the neuron is called the endoneurium as we have said the basic neuron or the axonal part of the neuron is found within this endoneurial layer but between the neuron and the endoneurial layer is the structure known as the myelin sheath to understand how this myelin sheath has formed and how it surrounds the axon we shall now look into the detailed structure of the neuron the basic parts of the neuron are the dendrites the cell body or the soma the axon and the terminal which is otherwise known as the synapse these are the dendrites of the neuron these dendrites are connected to the cell body or soma of the neuron the portion of the cell body from where the axon arises is an area called the axon hillock from the axon hillock the axon arises it is a long slender protuberance the function of the axon is to transmit the neural signal or the neuroelectrical signal that has been set up in the cell body then the, this neural impulse is transmitted over a long distance the time taken is more to reduce the amount of time taken for this impulse to be passed what is known as myelin sheath is present this myelin sheath is not present in all the nerves it is present only in specific nerves called the myelinated nerves this sheath is not a continuous sheath that extends through the entire length of the axon it is found in intervals so there are multiple myelin sheaths along the course of the axon leaving small gaps in between them the segments of myelin sheaths are called as the internodes and the gaps between them are called as the nodes of ranvier the schwann cell first ensheaths the axon and then continues to wrap itself around the axon in concentric layers as this wrapping occurs the nucleus is pushed to the peripheral portion of this myelin sheath and there are multiple layers of this sheath between the nucleus and the axon as can be seen in this diagrammatic representation the axon ends in a terminal otherwise known as the synapse as far as the nerve anatomy is concerned there is something known as functional anatomy that is which sort of fiber is present in which part of the nerve that is 
nerve mapping. For example, consider this cut section of the median nerve of the right upper limb at the level of the middle of the arm. The key on the right side bottom of the picture shows the orientation. This shows the sensory fibers occupy most of the lateral half of the nerve with the remaining part of the lateral half occupied by the motor fibers destined for the anterior interosseous nerve. On the medial side, the superior third is occupied by the motor fascicles destined for the pronator teres. The middle third consists of motor fibers going to the flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus and the lower third of the medial half of the nerve consists of fibers destined for the flexor digitorum superficialis muscles. Such nerve maps are available for all the important nerves of the body and should be kept in mind when planning any surgical exercise on the nerves.